Hi everyone, Kusumal Designs here. This is part three of the Tumio 135th scale M4A176W build. And as you can see, we've got a lot of work done since the last video, and we're going to be talking about that today. Now, right off the bat, you probably noticed the tracks. Now, I don't like to use the vinyl or rubber tracks that they give you in the box. I just don't. I like aftermarket tracks that you, you know, take a long time with, usually two days to build up. But um, I got this jumbo kit. And the jumbo kit comes with the uh, the duck bills that you see, um, and I just couldn't pass that up. Now, obviously, with the Tamiya kits, if you watched my video on you know how you swap parts and things like that, that's why I like to use the Tamiya kits. Um, I found that a lot of parts from the jumbo are are in this kit here. So these two kits are you know not identical, but you get a lot of parts from you know this kit to this kit. So anyway, um, and not just the tracks, like obviously the tracks are completely different, right? Those to those. So when I seen those, I thought, you know, I, I have to use them. And what I mean by duck bills is uh, these little end pieces right here. Now I can get aftermarket ones, right? But I just don't have them here. So anyway, I sucked it up and I thought, you know what? I'm going to use the vinyl ones on this build, especially for my M4A1. But um, I found that a lot of other pieces from this model really mimic this model, right? So you're gonna, I used a lot of parts from this kit into this kit and stuff. So we'll get into that in a bit. But um, I sucked it up and used the rubber tracks from this kit. And then obviously I'm going to be using aftermarket tracks later on when we do the jumbo. But that'll come later. That's why I threw the jumbo model into, uh, you know, the frame here. But... Um, the vinyl ones actually turned out rather nice. I did um, end up having to glue on uh, the rollers here uh, because I found that the, the rubber ones, they kind of lifted up. So I actually glued the rubber tracks right there, 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 just so they actually stayed level. Otherwise, it, it just didn't look right. That's why I don't like using the vinyl tracks, right? Because they just, they want to pop up. But it turned out rather nice in the end, at least I think so. So, so uh, if you followed my other M4 build, it builds pretty standard. Like I did, you know, kind of go far without doing a video on this build. Um, but, you know, after I sprayed it with uh, the TS5 here, I put the, um, you know, the TS5 all over the tank, right? You know, prior to you know doing the tracks and stuff, uh, especially on these pieces right here. So I sprayed it with the TS5, let it dry, then I sprayed it with the DS13, the clear, and then I did the decals. I find that uh, they adhere better with the TS13. And then after uh, that dried up, I sprayed it with the uh, the TS80, the nice flat clear. And then I used my 502 Optolong paints, made a slurry, like with the, the dark rust, the starship filth, and like some industrial earth, that kind of stuff. Made the slurry, and then that's what gave it the, you know, the mud look and such. Now, and that's pretty much uh, where we left it, right? And that's why it's, you know, all dirty. And then, of course, I took my X-Acto knife and, you know, chipped up the, the logo there like the star to make it look more used and things like that. And then I dug through my spare decals and found a name and we're calling this one Lucky. This one's called Lucky. I only had one, so it's only on the one side there, but this tank is called Lucky. And of course we did that with all, you know, all the parts with the wash and colors and stuff. And then of course we built up the, uh, the turret hatch, right? Now, I didn't get any instructions or anything, so I just went off the picture. And other things you're going to have to find is like, um, it didn't come with the pieces. See those uh, hand, hatch handles right there? I actually had to go through the spare parts of old models to find those hatch handles. They didn't come with the kit. They show them in the pictures, but they didn't come with the kit. So, those handles there and on, on the underside, you're going to have to find yourself. And then, of course, uh, you know, that piece right there to protect the, the visions. 
uh, pieces for the periscope that comes out of the kit you're gonna have to put that on yourself so there's a few pieces that you're gonna have to really pay attention to that you're gonna have to put on yourself and then of course um, the padding and stuff will have to paint at a later date so that'll come in, a, in another video and then the tracks um, we covered pretty much and then the obviously these little pieces under here right there for the steps you can kind of see it in the light and kind of show you right there right there the steps those don't come with the model they show them in the picture right there they show them in the picture they don't come with the model so I actually uh, built those myself um, out of uh, styrene or if you have a spare model you can build them yourself you know or like take them yourself I mean so something to consider or you can just leave them out let's see if we can get them in the light better for you but I'm sure you know what I mean those do not come with the model so something else to consider and then of course we're doing the road wheels and such uh, these are the spares I use my sharpie that's that's how I do it right it's the simplest way to do it without masking them so obviously uh, I paint it with the TS5 and then I clear coat it same process as that and then I use my I, these are clean I haven't done uh, the clear coat or anything yet this has just been painted with the TS5 and then you know put the sharpie over it and that's what I like to do and because there's a little ridge or lip the sharpie just goes over it and you get a nice clean line every time unless you you know slip with your finger then you don't get a clean line and then the end result especially after you weather it and stuff is that so this has all been weathered and such now obviously these um, kind of went together kind of like a Lego I guess the instructions I showed you in the last video I was gonna do it paint it separately and then you put them all together and then obviously because the tracks hide you know where they go together so you'll never see that and once we get mud and everything you'll never see you know where they stuck together so I'm not too concerned with that I'm trying to get the lighting in here or like the shadows and stuff I got lots of light but just the way you know what I mean where the glue line is you can even see the glue line it's so hard to get light into there to show you uh, I'm trying to think what else it's pretty much standard as far as you know uh, the decals uh, obviously I explained them but didn't tell you you know where I got them I just sacrificed these de you know the decals from uh, you know one of my M4 kits you know obviously I got tons of them so and then change the numbers around right 303 3934 I just switched the numbers around, kept the 303 and then the other numbers I just switched around just so it's not uh, generic from another kit. You know, obviously we're making our own tank. So there we go. Because you're in this kit here, because obviously we're not doing an Israeli tank, you're not going to get any um, American decals. So something to consider. So obviously we're not even doing this tank. We're doing, you know, a US um, 76W, right? So this whole model is not even supposed to exist, right? We cut out the turret and all the rest of it, changed the gun. So we're changing quite a bit of this tank, shaved off pieces, things like that. Um, obviously the 50 cal, um, this piece here, you know, we added it ourselves. This doesn't come with the kit. You know, we're trying to change as many things as we can to make this a, a completely unique model, right? So, I think that should cover it for this video. It's getting a little long. I'm just kind of showing you what we've done since the last. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. If I am, I'll, I'll cover it in the next video. But uh, we're getting to the point now where we're going to be pretty much putting all this together. And then we can start attaching, you know, the turret pieces on. And then really start starting like more of the weathering and such and putting the pioneer tools on um, Maybe uh, this one here. We're gonna have crew figures uh, and the driver and such on this one And then we're gonna figure out how we want to display this 
the last one we did a winter scene so this one maybe a summer scene or something so anyway thanks so much for watching please like share and subscribe as always and i look forward to your comments so thanks so much bye